Thank you, Pastor Jason. Thank you, worship team. If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn with me to Psalm 65. And I want to share a New Year's prayer with you this evening. Psalm 65, a New Year's prayer. While you're finding your way there, just want to call your attention. In your bulletin, there is a one-year Bible reading plan. And uh, I want to encourage you, you know, it's, it's not often that we get to start the new year on a Sunday. And so it's the first day of the week, it's the first day of the month, it's the first day of the new year. And uh, if you have never read through the Bible in a year, maybe this is the year that you should do it. If you haven't done it in a while, maybe this is the year that you should think about doing it again. You know, uh, just about 15, maybe 20 minutes of reading a day is all it takes to read through the Bible in a year. And this is a Bible reading schedule that you can follow. Uh, and if you just tick off the reading each day, you'll get through the whole Bible in a year. Some of you... Uh, you haven't read every part of the Bible, and you need to do that. Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by... Every word. I'm sorry, what did he say? Every word. By every word that proceeds from them. So I want to tell you, every word in the Bible is important, even the begats. You know, you know what the begats are? So-and-so begat so-and-so, and so-and-so begat so-and-so. You, you say, Lord, why did you put that in there? But I'll tell you what, there's messages even in the begats. And so every word is important. So uh, maybe you want to take this schedule and make it a goal. You can start fresh tomorrow morning, read through the Bible in a year. There's also an app that goes along with this schedule, and the information is printed there. And you can actually download the app to your phone, and uh, each day... The Bible reading will uh, be sent to your phone, and you can go on the phone and, and read it that way. Uh, so if you're traveling, if you're uh, commuting into work, uh, maybe that's just a little bit easier way. I, I like to read things on paper. Um, I, I don't like to read long things uh, on a computer screen, but some of you uh, like to do it, and you can do it that way. But uh, make it a goal. Read through the Bible. If you haven't done it in a while, maybe this is your year to do it again. All right, look with me, Psalm 65. Let's talk about a New Year's prayer, a New Year's prayer. This is a Psalm of David. He says, praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. To you, our vows will be fulfilled. You who hear and answer prayer, to you, all people will come. When we were overwhelmed by our sins, you atoned for our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are satisfied with the good things of your house, your holy temple. You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of angry men. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. You visit the land and care for it with water. You enrich it abundantly. The river of God is filled with water to provide the people with grain, for you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your goodness, and your chariot paths drip with oil. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks, and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy, and they sing. There are three things that I want us to do tonight in order to bring closure to 2016 and to welcome 2017. And they correspond to the three parts of Psalm 65. We're going to offer our praise. We're going to make our confession. And we're going to lift our prayer. And after we do these three things for our final act of worship, we're going to share at the Lord's Supper tonight. So let's talk about Psalm 65 for a minute. Old Testament scholars believe that this was an end of the season psalm. It was sung after the cycle of sowing and growing and reaping was completed and the harvest was brought in. It's a psalm that looks both ways, if you will. 
thanking God for the blessings of the last season and petitioning God to bless again in the coming season. And you know, that's just what we've come to do on New Year's Eve. We've come to thank God for blessing us and bringing us through 2016. And we've come to petition him in advance for 2017. Looking at Psalm 65, I, I see three ways to close out the old year and to welcome the new year. And I want to share them with you quickly. Three ways to close out the old year and welcome the new year. The first one is this. Offer your praise. Offer your praise. I love the opening words to this psalm. Praise awaits you in Zion, O God. Zion, Jerusalem, is the site of the temple, God's house. It's where the Jewish people have gathered to worship on the feasts for thousands of years right up to this day. Jerusalem is the rightful capital of the Jewish people and the Temple Mount is the rightful property of the Jewish people. Praise awaits you, O God, in the new year. We, your people, are going to gather in your house and we're going to give you the glory that's due your name. You know, this is a particularly special New Year's Eve for us. This is our 13th New Year's Eve in this sanctuary. And by the grace of God, we trust it's going to be our last. Next year on New Year's Eve, we're hoping that we can all gather together, all of us in one service in our new sanctuary. And so with hearts full of faith and hearts full of holy hope, we say praise awaits you in 2017, O oh God. Praise awaits you right here at Harvest Time Church. Praise awaits you in phase two. You know, I, I have to say that thought really helps me relate to David's anticipation in this psalm. I really get how much he is looking forward to God's people coming together to worship in Jerusalem. That's how I feel uh, uh, as I look forward to worshiping together in phase two. I can't wait to hear the worship team in phase two. They're going to sound good in there. I can't wait to hear our students lead worship in phase two. I can't wait to hear our children's choir sing in phase two. I can't wait to hear a thousand voices at one time lifting up their praise. I can't wait to see people worshiping God with dance in phase two. You know, there's going to be plenty of room down the front for it. I can't wait to see people worshiping God with, with wave offerings, waving flags in phase two. I can't wait for next Christmas. I can't wait for next New Year's Eve. I can't wait to do our first baptism in phase two. I can't wait to do the first wedding in phase two. I, I wonder who will be the first bride to get married in phase two. Tell you a little story. When we were building this building, when it was uh, not quite complete, we had a service in the unfinished building and uh, we gave everybody Sharpie magic markers and we sent them all over the building writing scriptures and, and writing prayer requests and different things. And so uh, we had one single uh, lady in our congregation and she knelt down right here in the center aisle and she wrote, here comes the bride. Now, uh, she wasn't seeing anybody. There was no prospects on the horizon. But you know what? Between the time that she wrote that and we finished the new building, the Lord brought a wonderful Christian husband into her life. And she was the first bride to get married in, the, in this building. So, you know, if you all want to just hang out a little after service, I'll give you a Sharpie marker. I'll let you go have at it in phase two. And you can just, you can just claim your Boaz, all right, from the Lord. Looking at David's words of praise, I, I wonder, how do we offer? How do we offer praise to God? First, looking at David's words, I find that we praise God through our resignation to him. We praise him with our surrender. Like so many Bible words, the Hebrew words translated in this psalm, praise awaits you, can be translated another way. In fact, our friend Brian Simmons translates them this way in the Passion Translation. They can be translated, silence is fitting praise to you. Now, how on earth can we praise God with silence? 
every Hebrew word for praise is a vocal word. It requires that we speak or we sing or we shout or we clap or we play an instrument. It requires that we make noise. So how can silence be praise? Well, the silence here is our refusal to question God. It's our refusal to fuss and complain. It's our refusal to argue with him or object to his sovereign choices. This is the silence of voluntary resignation of our will. It's the silence of loving submission. It's the silence of implicit trust. After God set the children of Israel free from Egypt, Pharaoh had a change of heart again, and he sent the Egyptian army out to kill them. When the children of Israel saw the army coming, they started to fuss at Moses. They said, what, Moses? Because there were no graves in Egypt, you brought us out here to die? Who knew that they were all sarcastic New Yorkers? <laughs> but Moses says to them, the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. You see, that's the silent resignation of praise. After Job fussed at God for a while, God finally spoke to Job and he said, Where were you, Job, when I laid the foundations of the earth while the morning stars shouted for joy? When God got through with Job, Job put his hand over his mouth and he said, You know, I'm not going to say any more. That's the silent resignation of praise. Praise awaits you in 2017, O oh God. My praise of silent resignation, my praise of loving surrender to your will, my praise of implicit trust in you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to fuss at you. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to question you. You know what? I'm just going to zip it. And I'm going to let you fight for me the way that only you can do. How do we offer our praise? We praise God through our resignation to him. And we praise him by giving our offerings of thanksgiving. David said, praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. The vows are thanksgiving offerings that God's people brought to his house after the harvest. First fruit offerings, that's your tithe. Offerings of grain and fruit and wine and oil and wool and linen, those are commodities. Offerings of sheep and cattle, those are assets. How do we offer thanks to God? Well, we thank him with our verbal praises and we also thank him with our giving. You know, that's why we give. That's why we bring the tithe and our offerings. We give to say thank you to him. We give to acknowledge that everything we have has come from him. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you the ability to get wealth. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, from the Lord of glory. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. Looking at David's words in Psalm 65, there are just so many reasons to thank him. We thank him because he alone answers our prayers. Verse 2, David says, you are the one. You and you alone hear and answer prayers. All of humanity comes before you with their requests. We thank him because he's provided a sacrifice that has covered our sins. In verse 3, David says, when we were overwhelmed by our sins, you provided an atoning sacrifice that covered our transgressions. In just a few moments, we're going to gather around the Lord's table to remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Jesus is God's provision for our sins to be covered. Jesus is God's provision for our guilt to be removed, making way for us to be restored in our relationship with God. Jesus is God's provision for our freedom from bondage to sin. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. There's just so many reasons to thank Him. We thank Him because He's chosen us 
from among all people on earth. David said in verse 4, blessed are those that you have chosen to be near you. Jesus talked about that. He said, you know, you didn't pick me. I picked you. What an awesome thought that is. If you're here tonight, you're here because God picked you. We thank him because he drenches us with blessings of provision. You visit the land and water it and enrich it abundantly. You drench it with showers. There's just so many reasons to thank him. We thank him because he blesses us in every season of our life. Verses 9 through 11 of this psalm describe a whole cycle of seasons. Plowing and planting and growing and reaping and the fallow season again. And David said, you crown the whole thing with your bounty. The whole cycle. You bless in every season. You know, it's true that we journey through seasons in life. The spring of our youth. The summer of young adulthood, the autumn of middle age, the winter of old age. But he crowns every season of our life with his blessing. In another place, David wrote, I have been young and now I'm old, but he has never forsaken me. He's never failed to bless me. He is an all-season God. We thank him because he blesses us in every kind of terrain that we traverse. Verses 12 and 13 describe different types of terrain, deserts and hills and meadows and valleys, but God blesses differently in each one of them and he makes sure that no matter where we're traveling, we're blessed. You know, it's true in life that we traverse a variety of terrain. We cross deserts of loneliness sometimes. We climb hills of hardship. We sometimes enjoy meadows of beauty and happiness. Sometimes we walk through valleys of despair. But God brings us through each difficult place and he gives us a special blessing in each one. He is not only an all-season God, he is an all-terrain God. This year our family traversed the valley of the shadow of death with my mother-in-law becoming unexpectedly ill in the spring She wasn't diagnosed until the middle of the summer and by the beginning of autumn, the Lord called her home. But he met us with his blessings of peace and his blessings of joy, knowing that we'll see her again soon. So we praise him with our silent resignation of trust. Three ways to close out the old year and welcome the new year. Number one, offer your praise. Number two, make your confession. From praise, David moves on to confession. He says, we are blessed. And he confesses several ways that we're blessed. We're blessed for one thing, because God has chosen us to draw nearer and nearer to him. There's a progression in verse 4 of Psalm 65. David says that we move from God's courts to the holy place of his house to the holy temple. That's the three stages of the temple, the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. God has chosen us to draw nearer and nearer to him. He doesn't hold us at arm's length. He's chosen us to be close to him. He's chosen us for intimate friendship. He's chosen us to know him and to be known by him. He's chosen us to bask in the glory of his beautiful presence. Once we were overwhelmed by our sins, but Jesus has made an atoning sacrifice. And now we have been chosen by him to draw near and be overwhelmed by his beautiful presence instead. We're blessed because his presence satisfies us with good things. David says in verse 4, we're satisfied with the good things of your house. David wrote in another place, in his presence there is fullness of joy. In his presence there is peace of mind, freedom from anxiety and fears. In his presence there is inner security, there is emotional wholeness, there is a feeling of well-being, there's personal fulfillment. In his presence is transformation. Maybe you have a New Year's resolution or two on your mind. Something that you wish you could change about yourself. 
Listen, I want to tell you something than a New Year's resolution, something better than a New Year's resolution is to have a New Year's revelation of his presence and to enter into a New Year's relationship with him that causes you to become a whole new you in the new year. We're blessed because he answers our cries for help by doing awesome deeds. He defeats our enemies. He delivers us. He does miracles. Can I tell you, we have a great, big, miracle-working God, and he still does wonders on behalf of his people. You see one standing right outside that's coming up right now. We're blessed because he moves mountains and he calms roaring seas. Listen, if God could set the mountains in their place, what obstacle of yours is too big for him to move out of your way in 2017. If God speaks peace to the wind and the waves, what conflict in your life is God unable to resolve in 2017? We're blessed because he's our hope when everyone else is in turmoil. As we finish 2016, there are many people who are feeling that they're without hope, but not us. Beloved, listen to me. Our hope does not come from the headlines. Our hope does not come from Wall Street. Our hope does not come from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Our hope has never been in a mere man. Our hope is in God and in his only son, Jesus. We're blessed because at the beginning and the end of each day, he evokes a song of joyful praise in our hearts. You answer our prayers with awesome deeds. God, our Savior, the hope of the ends of the earth, who formed the mountains by your power, who stilled the roaring seas, the turmoil of angry men, where morning dawns and evening fades. You call forth songs of joy. What better promise could there possibly be for 2017 than that each day is going to begin and end with a joyful song in your heart? because God is with you. Three ways to close out the old year and welcome the new year. Offer your praise. Make your confession. And finally, lift your prayer to the Lord. It's not so obvious in the English translation, but Psalm 65 ends with a petition for the coming year. In the English translation, it says, you visit the land, but what David actually wrote was, visit the land. In the English translation, it says, you drench the land, but what David actually wrote was, drench the land. These are petitions. Looking at these closing verses, I see three petitions for the new year. And in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to make David's petitions our New Year's prayer. The first petition is this, visit us this year. Visit us means to come and to give care. It's like a visiting nurse, if you will. Come and visit us for the purpose of caring for us. But specifically here, it's a farmer caring for his field, preparing it, nurturing it to grow good crops. Visit us with spring showers that soften the fallow ground and prepare it for tilling. Visit us and make furrows for planting. Visit us and enrich the soil with fertilizer to prepare it for seed. Visit us and sow seeds for abundant harvest in us. What have we made David's petition for the new year? Our petition. God, visit us this year. Visit us and prepare our homes for joyfulness. Visit us and prepare our families for wholeness. Visit us and prepare our marriages for fulfillment. Visit us in our prayer closets and prepare us to be a blessing to everyone everywhere we go. Visit us and prepare us to shine as a light in our workplaces. Visit us and prepare us to build life-giving friendships around us. Visit us and prepare us to cultivate healthy dating relationships. Visit us, God, at Harvest Time Church and prepare us to introduce more and more people to the goodness of the Lord in 2017. 
praise awaits you, God, at Harvest Time Church in 2017. So won't you come and visit us? Visit us and soften our hearts. Visit us and break up any hard ground. Visit us and enrich us so that we're ready to bear fruit. Visit us and sow the seeds of abundant harvest in us. Visit us. The second petition is this. Drench us this year. There are three symbols of the Holy Spirit in these closing verses of Psalm 65. One is rain, one is God's river, and one is oil. David prays in these closing verses for rain and more rain and more rain. Send spring showers that soften the hard ground. Send summer soakers that gently water the growing crops. Send the autumn rains that nourish the ripening grain. And then David says, God's river is full of water. There is no drought. There is no shortage of supply. There is plenty of water for everybody. There's more than enough to meet the need. You know, Jesus spoke about this river. He said, if anyone believes in me, out of his innermost being would flow rivers of living water. And he meant the Holy Spirit by that. And then David says, your chariot path drips with oil. What that means is that as God's chariot crosses the sky over us, it causes the clouds above us to open up and to pour down on us, to drip down on us. Just like the physical rain makes crops grow, it's the drenching of the Holy Spirit that makes us abundantly fruitful in every facet of our life. You know, Jesus talked about that. He said, if you remain in me, I will remain in you and you will bear fruit and more fruit and much fruit and fruit that remains. That sounds like a pretty good prayer for 2017, doesn't it? God, drench us with the Holy Spirit so that in every area of our life in 2017, we can bear fruit and more fruit and much fruit and fruit that remains. You see, it's the drenching of the Holy Spirit that enables us to become men and women of excellence. It's the drenching of the Holy Spirit that enables us to become loving husbands and honor-giving wives. It's the drenching of the Holy Spirit that enables us to be good parents. It's the drenching of the Holy Spirit that enables us to be faithful friends. It's the drenching of the Holy Spirit that enables us to become top students. You know what? I pray over every student at Harvest Time Church. I pray that the grace of God that was on Daniel and Babylon and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego and gave them a supernaturally enhanced ability to learn, I pray that on every one of our students, they will experience that and every one of them will rise to the top. Guess what? I pray over your kids. I pray for full free ride scholarships to college. And guess what? A lot of our students get them. Hallelujah. The drenching of the Holy Spirit enables us to become skilled professionals and effective executives. The drenching of the Holy Spirit enables us to become people who bring a blessing to everyone that we touch. What have we made David's petition for the new year our petition? God, drench us this year. Send the spring showers of the Holy Spirit summer soak us with the Holy Spirit. Send the autumn, the former, and the latter rains. Let the river of God overflow its banks here at harvest time. Let your chariot cross the sky over harvest time and let the clouds pour down on us. Visit us. Drench us. And the last petition is this. Crown us. You know, the way that God crowns us is by honoring us with good results. All of our efforts bring a good result. They bring a good financial return. They bring a good reward. Whatever we put our hand to, whatever we apply ourselves to, God adds his blessing to it and he causes it to prosper. 
God crowns us by giving us favor with men and in the world. He crowns us by causing us to be in just the right place at just the right time to gain an advantage. He crowns us by arranging introductions to the people we need to meet. He crowns us by presenting us with divine doors of opportunity. He crowns us by giving us heavenly wisdom that surpasses everyone else. You know what? In Babylon, Daniel was the go-to guy. The emperor, whenever he didn't know what to do, whenever he had a problem that he couldn't solve, he went to Daniel because Daniel had the right answer every time. And you know why Daniel had the right answer? Because God gave it to him. Pharaoh went to Joseph. Joseph was Pharaoh's go-to guy because every time he was in a crisis and he needed an answer, Joseph had the answer. You know why? Because God gave it to him. And listen, God can put such a grace and such an anointing on you that you become the go-to person in your company. You become the go-to guy. You become the go-to gal. You always have the right answer because you didn't come up with it yourself. Your great God in heaven blessed you. He crowned you with that kind of favor and honor. He crowns us by dummy-proofing our life so that even when we make a bad call, it won't devastate us, but he rescues us from our bad decisions. You know, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of when King Jehoshaphat and Ahab went to battle together. And uh, Ahab, before the battle, says to Jehoshaphat, you know, Jehoshaphat, they're going to be looking for me. They're going to be trying to kill me. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to dress up in my robe. I want you to dress up like me and ride in my chariot. And you'll th they'll think that, that you are me. And Jehoshaphat agrees to this deal. And so Ahab is disguised as a common foot soldier. And so they go into the battlefield. And Jehoshaphat is riding in Ahab's chariot. And he's dressed up in Ahab's robe. And so who does the enemy think he is? They think he's Ahab, and they start shooting at him, and he's riding around in circles, and all of a sudden it dawns on him, boy, this was a bad decision. I can't tell you how many days I feel like Ahab, uh, or like Jehoshaphat. I'm riding around in circles, getting shot at, and I'm like, how did I get myself into this situation? Who talked me into this? Why did I say yes to this? But Jehoshaphat cried out to the Lord, and the Lord rescued him. And guess what? Some guy shot an arrow, and it strayed off course. And guess who it hit? It hit King Ahab, and it took him out. Aren't you glad that God rescues us from the bad calls that we make? Uh, aren't you glad that he dummy-proofs our life? You crown the year with bounty. Your chariot paths drip with oil. David is saying the whole thing will be blessed. From January 1st to December 31st, the whole cycle of your new year is going to be blessed by God. He's going to answer your prayers with awesome deeds. He's going to be near you in every season. He's going to bring you through every kind of terrain you traverse. He's going to visit you and drench you and crown you and he's going to call you to begin and end every day of this new year with a song of joy in your heart. I have a word from the Lord for someone. Didn't share this in the first service, but the Lord gave me this in between services, and this is for someone here tonight. The Lord said he is going to preside over your new year. I just feel like there's someone and you're being pursued in court. There's a, a litigious issue and you're being pursued in court and, and it doesn't look like you have a chance of things going in your favor. And I heard the Lord say between services, when I went back to my office, I heard him say, I am going to preside over your new year. The Lord is going to see that justice falls in your favor. He's going to work it out. Just give him the silence of implicit trust. Just resign yourself. Just praise him with your quiet trust. Moses said, the Lord will fight you and you, you just hold your peace. So if that's for you, receive that. As we bid farewell to 2016 and we welcome 2017, receive this word. Three ways that we close out the old year and welcome the new. Offer your praise. Make your confession. 
and lift your prayer. Stand on your feet and give Jesus a great big praise in this place if you would, please.